Hey everyone, so it is true. I have written a play and I've made an album that is the same narrative told sort of in a musical medium. The play has been released. Um, this video will kind of be sort of a direction to the play itself because there's gonna be a link in the description. So if you wanna read the play, you just come to this video, check the description, click the link, and that will take you to the play. And it's not just the play, there's also a, a huge page on the analysis of all those characters, and there's gonna be a lyric page. So if you wanna listen to the whole album along with the lyrics, then feel free to do so. All of that stuff is on the site that I made. Christmas is in a few days, and I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm sure if you, if you watched the last video that I uploaded, you're very aware, I talked a lot about the inspirations behind the album. Um, I talked a lot about how excited I am about Christmas. That was a pretty huge part of it. Before I proceed to tell you about the album and the play, um, and I know I said this in the previous video, but I would really recommend reading the play first and then listening to the album. The play is not that long, it's about 48 minutes long. The album is an hour and 12 minutes long. Again, I'm referring back to the last video I uploaded, but I did say there that if you want to listen to the album in segments, feel free to do so. Since the album is a concept album, I would recommend listening to all the songs in order, but of course, if you don't want to do that, feel free to listen to it sporadically. You could listen to the album both from that narrative point of view, but also just to listen to some music. The reason I say that you should read the play before listening to the album is mainly just because there are a lot of lyrics on the album and a lot of names that I think might be quite confusing if you don't know the context of the play itself. And so allow me to give you a summary of what the play is about. Dear Christmas is a play partially based around Luke 2.14, which is a beautiful verse from the Bible. And according to the New King James Version, it states, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So those two words there, uh, peace and goodwill, are two of the most important themes in Dear Christmas. The play is an allegorical tale about love and peace, particularly the love and benevolence of Christmas. Just as a warning, I am gonna give you some spoilers, so if you wanna read the play beforehand, feel free to do so, but you can stay if you want. Keep in mind that I won't go into a full in-depth analysis of the play. If you do have any questions about symbolism or uh, the imagery that I've used, Feel free to send me a DM on Instagram, this is my handle, um, but this is like super super basic summary of the play. Here we go. The play begins with this introductory segment that is narrated by none other than Peace. Yeah, a personification of Peace narrates the introduction to the play. Peace talks a lot about how beautiful Christmas is and how amazing and beautiful Peace is, and this segues into the first act. So. There are these two friends named Robert and Jerry, and they are essentially having a conversation about how beautiful Christmas looks, how amazing the decorations look, how calming the night is. Robert introduces us to Mr. Liven's character, who doesn't appear yet. His name is just mentioned. And Jerry introduces us to the character of Joseph. Both Mr. Liven and Joseph are very key characters in the play. Robert mentions how Mr. Liven hadn't really reached out to him and they hadn't really hung out in a long time. Jerry also tells Robert that one year, even he and Joseph didn't hang out that much. But by the end of that year, on the 24th of December, Christmas Eve, they met. And he mentions how Joseph looked so bright and happy and exuberant. In short, Jerry tells Robert to wait a little bit longer and see what happens. Now, I'm not saying that everything will automatically become okay on Christmas. This whole play is an allegory. It's an allegory about how beautiful and amazing Christmas time is. And so all the great, amazing things that happen to characters could technically be interpreted both literally and metaphorically. The metaphor, of course, being about the beauty and the liveliness and the sweetness of Christmas time. Now we start exploring our protagonists. There are three protagonists in the play. Ren, Mr. Liven and Joseph. Ren is a poor man, he's a homeless man, and yet he is very optimistic, he's very faithful, and he's quite bright. Mr. Liven, on the other hand, is a wealthy man who is quite unfulfilled. Joseph is a perfectly satisfied man. He is neither rich nor poor, he kind of exists right in between. All three of these characters are very hopeful that Christmas will bring them joy and peace and calmness. Ren's only donor in the play is a man of the lower middle class named Simon, who is extremely generous, very caring, 
very giving spirit. And despite not being someone who's extremely aristocratic or rich, he tries his best to give whatever he can to Ren. Bill is Mr. Liven's assistant in the story. And even though he is a minor character, he is ultimately the character who introduces us to one of the most important pieces of information in the story, the spare house that Mr. Liven happens to own. In that scene, we understand that Mr. Liven has a spare house and he just doesn't know what to do with it, but he refuses to sell it because he believes that there might be some good that can come out of it. By the second act, it's the 24th of December. Jerry calls up Joseph and he tells Joseph that he and Robert really want to hang out. And so they decide on a time. Mr. Liven wants to buy some decorations, even though he has a fully decorated living room. Except this time, he tells his assistant, I want to drive there myself, and I want to get these decorations myself, because that's something I haven't done in a long time. In the evening, when Mr. Liven is done buying decorations, that is when he meets Ren. Mr. Liven goes up to Ren and offers him $100, uh, which Ren refuses at first, because it's such a huge sum of money. But since Mr. Liven insists, Ren takes it. But Mr. Liven observes Ren, and he finds this sweet optimism. There's something so beautiful and uh, hopeful in Ren's eyes, which has an emotional impact on him. And that's when Mr. Liven remembers that he has the spare house. And Mr. Liven tells Ren, listen, I see you're suffering right now, and I want to give this house to you. Ren is obviously really struck by this. It really touches him. He begins to thank the Lord, and Mr. Liven and Ren share a huge hug. Simon enters the scene and notices Ren's excitement. Ren tells Simon what has happened, introduces Mr. Liven, and all three of them hug, and it's a really bright, affectionate moment in the play. Um, meanwhile, Joseph is passing by. Um, Joseph leaves $10 in the bag and smiles, keeps walking on. So in the end, Mr. Liven decides to go to Warmth after a long time, the cafe. And I know I said I wouldn't get into analysis in the summary, but I just had to point this little scene out. The name of the cafe is Warmth. Mr. Liven has not been to this cafe called Warmth in a long time. And so after his amazing deed, in some sense, Liven has found Warmth again. Just wanted to throw that little bit of analysis in there. I'm done now. So the play ends with Joseph, Jerry, Mr. Liven, Robert, Bill, Simon, Ren, Peace, even the angel. That's one of the characters in the play. It ends with all of them together on stage and Joseph delivers his grand final monologue. And it's a monologue about peace and thanking Christmas for the beauty that it has shown. And um, that's the summary of Dear Christmas. So I hope this summary has been helpful. Um, I will now talk a little bit about the album. I've been working on this album for such a long time and it is surreal that it's done now. And I know I already mentioned this in the last video, but I am so, so excited for everyone to check this album out and to check this whole project out. Um, I hope you guys thoroughly enjoy this. Um, it was a lot of fun to make. It was a huge passion project. I want to give another huge shout out to the three musicians who contributed horns to the record. There's some really great friends of mine, Jack, Alex, and Riley. Um, thank you guys so much. You guys absolutely killed the horns. I'm so, so grateful that you guys chose to help me out with this project. Please go check them out. They are some fantastic musicians. I can guarantee that you guys will absolutely love their music because they are just amazing, amazing musicians. Like, <laughs> I, don't think I, can, I don't think I can use words to explain how amazing these guys are. Thank you guys, again, thank you so much. If you want full analyses of all the characters in the play, you will find all of that in the website that I've linked down below, where you can read the play and find the lyrics of the album, and of course the analyses, and all the credits, of course. Hope you have an amazing Christmas. I hope the season is bright and rewarding and beautiful. And of course, have a really happy new year as well. I hope you enjoy the project. Thank you so much.